Like, and sometimes, like, we'll just see that they're performing at, like, this, like, hole in the wall kind of space. Party, and we're that, like, okay, sure. let's go and, and check it out. And they don't even know they're being scouted. They don't even know. Wow. They don't even know. So I always tell Iris, like, you need to be, like, doing things, like, anything. They're coming down to the wire. the center's handed. Rich Wright is coming up on the inside. I started, I started listening to the new Kendrick album. Good. This guy is a music journalist. And oh. the second Kendrick came out, he's like, I just need to give it the yeah. amount of time it deserves. Gonna, I don't want to disrespect it. And then two weeks later, he's like, I still haven't listened to it. I'm like, bro, come on. Tell me you I don't have one hour either. in your two-week yeah. busy you schedule. To it? Yeah. I can't listen to things when they're hyped. Yeah. Because then I had to will, do it on my own time. Yeah. And I realized that I'm still never going to have an hour and a half of my day to like roll a joint <laughs> and fucking man, drink I love, water and I love just that listen album. to it. That album's sick. But if you guys but, hear it in the background, it's because we're across the street from Cranian Festival, Block Party. Weekend's been a vibe. We got Tanisha Richards in the house. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? Welcome. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Of Thank course. you for coming by <laughs> and your busy schedule. She's on a business trip and they're making her do business on her business trip. And it makes it seems like she always be doing business. <laughs> I am. I'm forever working. It's a bad. It's a bad thing. <laughs> do you like that? I do, because when I'm not working, I'm like, what am I gonna do? Uh, um, <laughs> I have the same issue. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep distracting yourself. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. What are you working on? The festival, Manifesto Festival, is happening yeah. August, the week of August eighth to the twelfth. So, yeah. What's uh? What kind of what preparation is uh? That entail everything so booking artists um we have a lot of like partners that we have to satisfy so mm. you know working with them to like figure out how we can make everyone happy but still stay true to like manifest those core so yeah so like i'm gonna get into a big question here right off the bat because you already brought it up i'll mm -hmm. lob it you just don't <laughs> get there don't um, get there so <laughs> Um, you didn't alley anything though. Yeah, I'm crying. <laughs> I, was, I was introing. Just ask the question. Just ask the fucking question. Um, so when you say like getting artists on the show, like like getting artists on the bill, like how do you guys go about picking which artists get to perform a manifesto? What's that process like? So we kind of like have favorites. So we like watch artists like on their socials and like go to their shows and like low-key you know scout them out without them knowing newspaper with the eye holes cut in literally yeah. <laughs> like i'm just in the back and normally they said me because no one knows who i am i'm like this invisible person mm -hmm. so i normally go record them and then i send it back to our artist relations team and yeah mm -hmm. that's really how it if works. you pass the test then you get the call back exactly because okay. you run the show right yeah you run the show what's yeah. your like official Title. managing director i'm not a titles person but yeah, that yeah. Is my, okay my okay. title <laughs> so <laughs> you, just say it, you know give it that you know <laughs> <laughs> um it, you just you spoke like just briefly about like the core principles um how is it like that you kind of do, do, when you like look for artists are you looking for people who kind of share those those sort, same sort of principles yeah and so, what are those principles so manifest is like a youth-led organization so like we're all about what's happening like currently in like arts and culture so when we're looking for artists we're like okay who's like relevant but has a message like we don't just want like any like trap star on the stage mm -hmm. you know there's other stages for that so people that have a message um and like sharing like a authentic story is kind of like yeah. so like when you guys are going through the process of like picking your favorites mm -hmm. is it based on wh what's like the formula or is there like an algorithm behind it? it's like hey like we actually like their music but we also have to look into the number side of things like they got x amount of streams x amount of followers like what is the kind of formula for that we do a combination of both because there's some artists that are like so talented but no one knows who they are yeah like so you're not like dropping by like people's garages to yeah. hear them perform to their like couple <laughs> friends exactly. right yeah well actually sometimes we <laughs> You'd do you'd be surprised yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. sometimes like we'll just see that they're performing at like this like hole in the wall kind of space party, and we're yeah, like sure. okay let's go and, and they don't check even it know out. they're being scouted they don't even know wow. they don't even know so i always tell iris like you need to be like doing things like anything so that huh. we see you on your on our timeline we use instagram a lot and twitter so yeah 
they need to stay active i like the idea of you just being like you're just kind of the it's incognito really like yeah that's it's cool that's, uh, you guys are like looking for people to just go to random shows yeah i like that so, yeah, i'll do that for yeah, free we'll yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. Pay, I'll buy my tickets <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun because yeah, really you get cool. to see them as themselves like are they polite like do they introduce right. themselves to you or are they just like snobby like because we don't want that either right so right, right. in the scouting process are you going up and meeting with them after the show yeah and be but like, they still don't know so i'm just like hey like great show oh, and like okay. depending on how they act, they act it's like, like a fan yeah ah, exactly okay. undercover boss yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so when they think they're like you were at my show i'm like i was I <laughs> that's uh, crazy uh, like, yeah. <laughs> that's cool I, I think a lot of people want to know though like how much is it about because I feel like a lot of people always like, like, oh, it's all about like numbers and just it's all who you know and viral and yeah. shit like that. So yeah. like, how much is it about the music compared to how relevant they are on social media? Um, I would. S- so if you want like a top slot, you have to have like numbers, right? So we use like the celebrity of like our headliners mm-hmm. to showcase mm-hmm. our emerging artists. So like, there's some artists on our lineup this year that has like maybe like 25 stream or like plays a mm-hmm. month and like. But they're talented so this mm. is our way of like showcasing them and like letting the city know like follow them so you actually believe in these artists exactly so that's dope because it's like to get eyes on them you're getting people like thames in so it's exactly. like hey, people are gonna buy the ticket or like go to the show for that exactly and then they're also gonna find out these other people like shout out tia banks i know her exactly. through Oseko, who's a dope artist yeah. too so mm-hmm. She's, yeah yeah we love her. that's cool man that's yeah. cool i like that um do you ever one one problem i have like because i've seen some like i i like the opening acts at concerts you know what i mean and like i'll, I'll if there's someone like that i even like have an inkling of knowing like i i will try to like get there early and watch that mm-hmm. um is that ever a worry to you as a concert planner that like people just don't respect the opening act as much as they perhaps should yeah 100 percent. and it's something that we're like constantly trying to like figure out like how do we get people there right on time so this year we're not announcing show times so okay if there's an artist that you want to see like you just got to be there you have to be there on time festival style have you yeah. ever done that before or is this a new strategy this is new so we're hoping that i don't feel like i've ever seen that either he, so um we have a new member his name is marcus he used to run his own festival mm-hmm. and he does that okay and he said that that's how he gets people to come out on time so we're hoping Everyone knows that like Thames and Jasmine are going to be the very last, but you don't know what time mm. they're going to be on. So it could be six o'clock. You don't right? know. Right? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Doors open at come five. Grab lunch yeah. and dinner at the <laughs> right? Spot, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So how did you get? How did you? How did you start manifest? Like how did you get into that? Did you have a music background before this? No, not at all. So it's actually an accident. So um, I'm an event planner. That's like what I do, and I went to school for social work. So. I've always wanted to see how I can like merge my two passions together, like community and like my love for arts. Um, so the manifest invited me in 2019 to teach a class about event planning and coordination. And the ED at the time had left like near the end and the board was like, so we need somebody to run the organization. And I was like, okay, well sure. Never done a nonprofit before, never written a grant before. But I'm a kind of person. I'm like YouTube is there to teach me how YouTube to do it. YouTube University, <laughs> yes, <Listen>. sir. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, sure. And I was only supposed to be there for six months, and yeah, I'm happy here, accident, so. right? Yeah, yeah. I kind of spoke into existence because I was like, I need a manifesto budget, like to plan a a concert. I always wanted <laughs> to do that, and I'm like, I need a manifesto budget. So when I got the opportunity, I was like. I got a manifesto budget. Exactly. And now you're like, I need a Coachella budget. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> listen, if you talk to my team, I'm just like, so how are you going to become Coachella <laughs> of sick. Canada? Like, that's the next goal. So. so, yeah, like, what is your strategy moving forward? Like, how do you keep trying to build up manifesto? Because yeah, it already is, it- like, the show. Like, like up here in Ottawa, like, we all know manifesto. Oh, okay. Canada-wide, I think people know it, too. But and like, respect it. How are you guys, like, trying to push the envelope? Year it's hard so this year us doing bud stage is like a stress and a half because that's like the biggest show and i'm always thinking about like next year even though i'm working right now i'm like mm-hmm. so what are we doing next so i really want to do the toronto island for like three mm-hmm. days um i think that's like our next step but it's probably gonna be like two years from now but okay mm-hmm. have you guys ever done like a full weekend or is it always a one night thing it's always been a one 
day kind of thing but we're doing like a showcase on the 11th um for emerging artists that didn't make our live our big stage so um yeah but i do want to do a multiple day event so if it's only if it, if you have the the one manifesto show from one day of the year what are you doing for the other 364 um so we have like programming that we do throughout the year um and we're going to develop a new this is we haven't announced this but we're going to be doing something called mini festo um, exclusive <laughs> exclusive <laughs> down on the wire yes, exclusive yes <laughs> uh, so mini festo which is like a small version of our festival it's going to be at history um, and we'll probably start that in the fall. So we're trying to find ways to like be, stay relevant throughout the entire year. Okay, cool, mm-hmm. cool. Like how big is the Manifesto team? Like how many people got helping you work on this? So we have eight people. We're okay. a small team for like a wow. festival. For how like, don't we have eight people? Big, I know, how are we not <laughs> on the same level as Manifesto? <laughs> yeah, last year it was four, so. Damn. Yeah, wow. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta say that. you have to be a multitasker at Manifesto and like no weekends, no nothing. Like you're forever working. Wow. Yeah. Yes. How do you find these committed people? <laughs> I don't even know. It's actually really, yeah. The team is awesome. Are you meeting people naturally to join the team or is it some Indeed stuff you're putting out? Oh, definitely not Indeed. Like we have a couple of like partners where like they send youth over and some of them oh, stick, okay. some of them don't, but. Definitely, you just have to be passionate. You don't even have to know how to put a festival together. There's a lot of people on the team has never done mm. Mm. a show in their life. But as long as you have passion, you're like driven and ready to learn, then mm. yeah. Quick YouTube search away. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I tell everyone, I'm like, if there's Google and YouTube, so there's no excuse. Yeah. To someone's, it out. someone's had, the, like, yeah. I know I'm not doing this for the first time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And if I am, I'm going to make a YouTube about it. Exactly. So, yeah. Content. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're paying it forward. <laughs> exactly. Um, when you when you like look at yourself as a as an organization and what you do, you know, giving a platform and stage to these artists that are on the rise, mm-hmm. um, how does that make you feel? Like you know, it's obviously it's something that is is gonna make you feel good, but like kind of explain explain that feeling. Yeah, no, I think my thing is is definitely like how do we outside of platforming them, like how do we continue to support them after the festival? Mm-hmm. So like working with um there's an artist his name is ashton francis he performed last year at a festival and this year we're helping him with like you know creating content how to make a deck how to like the afterlife of you know performing because i think what happens often is like they ride this wave of being on the festival and then you don't hear of them again Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. i think for me what makes me happy is like be able to actually support these artists after the fact and like use manifestos resources to um elevate their careers mm. essentially so yeah i kind of we wanted to talk about that because this is a question for the artists out there um i asked like one of our artist friends emphasis on the friends, we're, friends <laughs> now. Uh, we were talking to freddie prince before this and i was like what do you want to know <laughs> from because we're talking to Tanisha richards from manifesto so like what would you want to know as an artist because that's you know point, point of this interview is to give mm-hmm. you guys some knowledge too <laughs> not just to have fun but um <laughs> he wanted to know like how do you keep like you're talking about keeping them going after the fact so he's like how do you maintain that relationship after the, the fact is it on the artist to keep following up with you guys is it an in-person thing follow up with emails dms or is that annoying if they keep hitting you up or is that on you guys to make sure that you're following up with the artists i think it's both we're doing a horrible job of following up if i'm being honest so i always tell everybody like harass us like you're not bothering us you're reminding us of like um so dms emails a lot of these artists have my numbers now, so like they'll text me all the time. Um, yeah, you have to, if you want it, you have to be persistent. Mm. Who cares if you're bothering people? They're gonna remember your name, so when opportunities come up, I'm gonna be like, hey, like, Freddie, like, are you ready to hit the stage at Coachella next year? Because we have a stage there, you know, like things like that. Mm. So, um, yeah. Do you guys have a stage at Coachella? No, we don't. <laughs> <It's existence. laughs> not yet, not yet, it. not yet. Yeah. Man, ooh. Listen, yeah. it's coming. I've been waiting for it's that, coming. and I felt like that was, <laughs> I felt like that was the appropriate time to drop that. So it's definitely coming. Yeah. I, I, yeah. 
That's a, quick, oh. quick, quick little shout out to our cameraman Arush right now holding it down. He's grinding back there. <laughs> you guys <laughs> do not see it. He, he is, is working sweating. miracles. <laughs> he's working miracles you know back there. Arush, just zoom it out for a second. Get us all three here. He's, just, he's, just, uh, just take a break for a second, buddy. Breathe it out. You can angle the camera down a bit. Yeah, so right. it's, you know, <laughs> he's, he's adjusting multiple cameras back there. That's uh, so funny. It's a one man show. Good floor shot. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> you figure it no, out. that's funny. Um, the SD card might be in the purple thing behind yeah. you. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Um, Arush will also have to edit all. <laughs> Arush will also have to edit all this. <laughs> Do you know? You want it to be authentic, right? It's raw, natural yeah, exactly. conversation. Yeah, exactly. having a good time? Yeah, I'm loving it. I was nervous. I'm not. I'm like an awkward person. So Me too. depending on like yeah. energy, I'm like, is this gonna be awkward? Like, I'm just gonna one word answers, or is it gonna be like? A for real conversation, right. you know. So, um, you said you hadn't been to, to Ottawa since you were twelve. Yeah. Um, what do you what do you know now about the developments in it, and how like what do you how do you perceive the art scene here in Ottawa? That's my mm. question. To be honest, I was like surprised. So my I don't know where my grandma lives, but it's just a bunch of like old people. Mm-hmm. So I'm just a nursing like, home, maybe. um but yeah so i wasn't really like expecting much i thought it was gonna be like a little boring to be honest mm-hmm. um, we get that a lot yeah. yeah but it's a vibe like i walked outside i'm like oh there's like things happening mm-hmm. like you know who are do you have a top three artists to look out for in ottawa or do you feel like you're not or give me one <laughs> give me one if you don't know that many um i don't know many so i know Zena's not from ottawa i think she's from montreal but i follow i followed her which is why she's on our our festival this year i love babe ruth i don't know if she's from ottawa yeah yeah, yeah. i love her Babe Ruth's been on the show yeah yeah she's mm-hmm. fire she's, she's my fire. favorite okay yeah so she's she's really, she was last year on manifesto yeah she right? was, okay. and that's cranium actually suggested her to us because we're looking Uh, for like how do we like broaden our our scope and yeah her and her team they're so much fun how often are you like manifest in cranium and communication um i met them last year oh i didn't even know that yeah but they're all awesome people and like yeah Mm, shout out shout out cranium's doing their thing yeah for sure Um, you mentioned the emphasis on youth like Mm -hmm. with you guys and also working with other youth Mm -hmm. partners yeah what does that look like because is it i'm like one organization that comes to mind is um we just interviewed rich kid yesterday and you mentioned the remix project mm-hmm. in toronto is that like one like outlet you guys would use to kind of source youth or like where are you guys looking yeah so remix project is actually in the same building as us oh, down okay. the hall so like there are neighbors and partners um so yeah we definitely reach out to remix there's rise there's afrowave there's so many organizations out there so um a combination of that and just doing open calls of like hey are you looking to work and like get paid because that's my thing mm-hmm. i pay everybody volunteers included get paid to work at manifesto it's not really volunteering <laughs> they don't know that they're getting paid so they volunteer their time and then i'm like here's a hundred dollars thank you so yeah sweet that's cool sweet. yeah um i i just kind of want to go back to the artist artist this one's for you again <laughs> listen in here um what what is it that really draws you to an artist? I think like being authentic. Like I think it's easy to like get mixed up in like what's popping right now and artists that constantly change their sound to match what's mm-hmm. you know, what's cool right now. Mm-hmm. I can't I can't with it. You don't like when artists try and sound like someone. Yeah, they like to sound like who they are. And I know like You don't ever think it's like experimenting? Like with, like this new Drake album. Let's go there. Mm-hmm. Do you, I I listen to it. I'm like, okay, it's, it's like okay, like I yeah. can get behind that. But like, it is being done right now. But mm-hmm. he did it in his own way, for sure, for sure. And I know it's it's a fine balance. How, I don't know. What do you feel she about just, that? <laughs> I'm not talking about Drake. <laughs> not, listen, we love Drake. We love Drake. I hope to see you at the festival, Drake. But um, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to answer. <laughs> I'm trying to be political. Sorry, artist. One great <laughs> question threw her in a blender. She's yeah. like, I'm not doing it. Yeah, I don't know. Just takes the mic. <laughs> it's over. <okay. laughs> yeah, Be our first know. interview walkout. It, 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 does it, does it, <laughs> second episode, second episode. Second, yeah. of the new format. <laughs> 
be a crazy stat. We're 50 50 on walkout. <laughs> <laughs> you guys actually had a walkout? No, no, no. no, no. no. Oh, okay. If you did, oh, okay. we, he's just saying because we revamped the whole show. Oh, so yeah. So this is yes. technically like. I guess second. technically the second episode. We have like hundreds, but this is technically mm-hmm. the second episode of the new looks. So yeah. That'd be That's crazy funny. though. This was the second episode ever and we just had our own <laughs> studio <laughs> decorated this well and are this naturally, like have this natural chemistry. <laughs> um, okay. What about like, okay, I, w- I, I want to go back to that though, but for an artist, you know, when they're reaching out, what are the best ways to do that? Not even necessarily to manifesto, but like mm-hmm. oh, it's a larger scale. Like how how can an artist market themselves to these festivals to kind of get selected? I think coming prepared. I think a lot of artists are just like, hey, like I'm an artist. I want to be on your show. And like, we'll just send like a Spotify link. And I'm just like, mm. okay. So what are you looking for? Like a professional EPK yeah, like, portfolio? Yeah. You know, like show me that you put some work into it. Um if you don't have one be like hey i want support i always tell artists the best way to like get in is like to like actually volunteer your time mm. to like so people that volunteer at manifesto have been on the stage because when we're looking for artists emerging artists we're like hey like do you want now it's your chance to, mm-hmm. you know um and i'm a big fan of like asking questions you know the answers to just to like start a conversation start a rapport with people mm-hmm. um but yeah, definitely come prepared if you are trying to get like headlining position. Like I need to see some kind of accolade or something mm. like that. Being in Ottawa, like what do you what do you think of the city so far? I mean, I know it's just a short or small sample size and you mm-hmm. haven't been here since you were a kid. But what do you yeah. think? No, I love it. It's like so like quaint, but like still like city feeling. Mm-hmm. So I like it. It's not loud like downtown Toronto. Like mm-hmm. I can walk down the street. We were jokingly saying yesterday that like it's like a couple's space. Like it just okay. looks like something that you walk down with your significant other holding yeah. hands, like yeah. skipping down the street. Like <laughs> so me and John do every day. Yeah, right? That's how we got to the studio. Love it. If you ain't skipping, you ain't moving. You, know I mean? <laughs> you um, like you can be angry as fuck. Just start skipping. <laughs> I swear to God, you'll get a smile on your face. Like you need you don't need therapy. Just go out there and skip. <laughs> but you should check out therapy too. <laughs> you should check it out. Yeah, um, that new Kendrick album is hitting different. Go, go. <laughs> Therapy's all right. Therapy's all right. Um, what do you think the Ottawa music scene is missing compared to Toronto? Obviously, there's bigger infrastructure in Toronto, but just from a ground level, what do you think Ottawa needs? Honestly, based on what I'm hearing, it seems like it's pretty similar. Like this, like isolated island, like one man for themselves, like. Um, lack of resources which is like the same in toronto when you think about it it's all um, like a ratio of size exactly right? you know like exactly. there's obviously more there because there's more people there exactly but we're like a fraction of the size so we obviously have a fraction of the infrastructure and um utilities i guess exactly i want to just piggyback on that question but like what about you know i think toronto's even starting to get recognized as one of the musical meccas of the world right mm-hmm. you know like we're it's it's in there like when we're talking about sounds you know you've got the southern um state sound east side west side and i think toronto's starting to sort of become like an entity of its own in the musical world but when you travel as you do um you, you said you travel a lot for work and i can only assume it's in scouting and kind of um trying to put together set lists for your shows like mm-hmm. what are what is it that on the grand scale scale of things like when you when you travel what are most of these major cities missing or what do they have that we could bring to ottawa or toronto do that one second do one first <laughs> <laughs> what's missing yeah like like what why, why why aren't we talking about vancouver's music scene right now like what why aren't we talking about edmonton why what you know what i mean yeah i think Honestly, I think because of like Drake, Weekend, Tory Lanez, that's mm-hmm. why everyone's paying attention to Toronto. Like we have like the top art, Justin Bieber. Like we have like the top artists coming Big out three, of the right? city, yeah. right? So I think that's why everyone's like focused on Toronto, like wanting to come to Toronto. Every time in the, I'm in like Atlanta, they're like, we're trying to get to Toronto. Like there's so much talent out there, right? So mm. I think um, I recently went to PEI and even there I was like, oh my gosh, like oh. there's like music out here. Like, you know. <laughs> That's was, not made with spoons and yeah, washboards. Like, literally, I was like, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> so even me, myself. Just rapping over blown yeah. beads. <laughs> PEI type beat. Listen. Fucking accordion. <laughs> I was surprised. I was like, you guys have a hip hop scene out here? Like, 
they do uh, they do like it's four it's rappers <laughs> it's like four but still it's still there you know but <laughs> you go to the same show every fucking weekend they just take turns headliner listen i'm not saying that's facts but um yeah i think i think once we have like big names like in other cities yeah then, okay there, there yeah. just needs to be someone like but like it, i don't know like you well because in ottawa like we have Knight Lavelle, yeah, and he's a top five biggest Canadian like rap artist right rap now. artist mm-hmm. for sure, like, hip hop R and B artist. But so he's, he's top five, like behind Drake, Weekend, Tory Lanez. He's he's. But does he rap Ottawa though? Yeah, he, he does. He does. He's but just he's very like he stays inside low key and stuff. Gotcha. Stays but inside. it's like how is like that? You know what I mean? If you have a top five artist in the country in your city, how is the music scene not blowing up? Right, you know, it's it's mysterious. Yeah, that's fair. I like um. And I'm it's talking like, like not bias. Like if you look at the numbers on Spotify, yeah. Because like, did you, like, are you familiar with like, uh, oh, fuck, I'm like baby no baby. What's yes, his name? You know I what know I, who you're talking about. I, you know what I mean. Yeah. Baby no moolah on, yeah. on Instagram, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know. I think it's like <laughs> baby no money in yeah. real life. I'm not quite sure, but like he's he's from Vancouver. Um, and again, it's a it's a different type of sound, but like it's it's like he's sort of kind of starting to get that kind of he's the cloud Lunch, around yeah. him, right? But I don't necessarily know if he's like his he's doing more. Like I, f- I find like the most typical thing for a, an artist that blows up out of Canada to do is just add a couple more Canadian dates to their tour, and then spend the rest of the year in LA. You know Max, what I mean? Like it, we know as soon as you can kind of get to that level of like moving out of the city and then being able to put on by just doing like oh i'm canadian that's why i'm doing shows in edmonton calgary and winnipeg like you know what i mean Hmm. and then a a thing is is that the states only sees like when you say canada like toronto Mm -hmm. like that's all they know so even if they're like oh i'm from ottawa they're like is that in toronto and it's just like (laughs) sure like you know like one of those that's like john did an interview with nathan an artist from uh ottawa and he was he did a video in LA and they no, kept saying no, like what it, city you from No, it was it was he did he like he applied to like the SoundCloud spotlight thing and he he applied to it and it was a regional thing and th- there was like one in Miami, um LA I imagine, whatever, big cities and then Toronto was one. So he applied and ended up fucking around and winning and had to go to didn't have to go. He was allowed to he, he was able to go to Toronto and shoot this um thing with uh with SoundCloud and they're like, "So where are you from?" He's like, "Ottawa." And then they're like, how is it, how is that different from Toronto? And then he was saying that and then they <laughs> clip that and it makes him sound like a Toronto artist. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, they just, they fucking, they got me. <laughs> like, uh, what is it like that you think, um, like what, what's going to bring that limelight? Is it, is it just, it can't just be so simple as like being a good fucking artist that blows up. Like how, how do we bring ourselves that kind of clout? Like how do we get that Toronto inflation? Mm-hmm. I really feel like, the more that happens, like, out in Toronto, Ottawa, like, Crane Festival, like, making it internationally known festival where people from wherever are coming to Ottawa, like, that's how you build it. So, mm-hmm. you know, South by, is it South by, no, what's coming to Toronto in September? La- uh, Rolling Loud. Rolling Loud, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That coming to Toronto, like, that's a big that's deal, huge. you know? So, yeah. things when things like that start happening, so when Rolling Loud goes to Ottawa, people are going to be like, oh, Ottawa is a mm. place that we need to be as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Interesting. I, uh, the the traveling thing too is uh, interesting because a lot of people say like, from a business standpoint, it's like have a mind like you're always traveling because when you travel places, you're always like, oh, what? Like things are different. Like I was just in Montreal and they don't have uh, streetlight buttons. Hmm. Oh, interesting. That was like the most interesting thing <laughs> I found about Montreal. Half of them speak French. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but you're always like... <laughs> <laughs> when you're traveling, you always have that mindset of like, oh, they have this and we don't, or they're missing this that we have. Mm-hmm. So where is it that has sideways uh, traffic lights? Quebec. That's Quebec. Quebec. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> but like through all this traveling that you do, is there stuff that you see that you take interest in that is just missing in Toronto or Canada as a whole? Um, this is gonna be so cliche, but really, it is like the community like it's very like isolating here in canada like it's mm-hmm. very like one person whereas like the uk like they're so community oriented like if i'm on you're on you're on cameraman's mm. on like everyone is like Shut winning up, <laughs> Shut up, <cameraman. laughs> everyone is gonna win everyone's gonna eat um and i think that's something like the uk is its own like music epa like center like it's mm-hmm. 
I don't know. The UK is what t- Toronto needs to be. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because uh, they can win without touring. Like in the UK, you don't need a tour. You can just be successful in the UK and like live your life. It's because they don't have guns. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> they stab people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, a big I love. Problem. I love how there's like. A, I was watching a Vice documentary on the scooter gangs, and it's just like people who rip around on scooters and steal purses from old like ladies. The Vespa type yeah, thing. no shit. It's a thing in New York as well. Gang. Be careful. Yeah. Yeah, they're all on scooters. It's like Italy out there. <laughs> <laughs> Pickpocketing, <laughs> making a big comeback, bro. The, the, the whole like isolation thing too. Um, I feel like Ottawa's not like that. I think Ottawa's very community driven mm-hmm. when it comes to honestly everything, but especially like the music scene. Everyone's always trying to collaborate, put Love each other it. on. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people say like that's what Toronto doesn't do. And if Toronto did that, it then it would hit it. another level. So it's like we're just kind of the opposite. We yeah. have the community aspect to it yeah. that we need to push each other to grow. We just don't have the, the infrastructure. So it's like if we just kind of like merged. Yeah. The what the two cities have like our two strengths if we just move to Ro- or ottawa to like hamilton <laughs> we just, yeah. like, i think a lot of people down there would take that trade off dude <laughs> we don't respect hamilton <laughs> Hamilton, Brampton. that's my hometown man hamilton burlington oh burlington okay yeah, yeah. it's okay yeah. that's, <laughs> right. that's why i'm here <laughs> um so people are like ottawa's boring i'm like you don't know where i'm from yeah no There's when you're when you're traveling like do you have any things that you've um like notable things that you've taken from your travels that you apply to manifesto and what you do um honestly i'm trying to figure out how to incorporate like art like visual art more into the festival um in a non like cheesy way so outside yeah. of like just doing like art show, art show mm-hmm. like how do we like incorporate so like Coachella does an awesome job of that where it's just like random art pieces just there and like it's also used as like Instagrammable moments as well. Mm-hmm. Um, do they do it like on, on the stage or like just no, kind of no, like, it's just like, like it's huge, things. right? So like it's like a big park. Like pop ups and, and stuff. Uh, yeah, like there's fucking like you, you You're find a house of mirrors of somewhere yeah, there, bro. Exactly. Like, like okay. that sort of shit. Like exactly. weird sculptures, like interactive sculptures. Exactly. You can watch. Mm. So fuzzy you're trying, walls you're trying to, to build yeah. on drugs. <laughs> yeah, you know that's until you Shit have to be like, on look something. At, you're like, yeah. like, I see a spider. Yeah. Like, no, I see a cow, man. Like, yeah, one hundred percent. Do you? Uh, <laughs> so I guess you're trying to grow like the off the stage kind yeah. of aspects of manifesto. Exactly. So that people want to come. So I'm like, what is Coachella doing? Where people are there from like 10 a.m. camping out. Mm. Like, what are they doing that manifesto isn't doing? And how can we do that so that everyone gets the light that they need do you like how how do you you must like imagine like a very concise way of doing this and like doing your show on one day it has to be rather like kind of concise and well planned out yeah do you worry about you know kind of packing too much into one day like i I guess we talked about that sort of multi-day thing like coachella is like fucking a month long isn't yeah it? <laughs> it's two weekends two weekends yeah. Yeah. oh really yeah, yeah. Dude. i don't even know that it's like six days yeah wow yeah that's, you, you, that's, too you many, imagine, that's too many drugs. Could, could you imagine doing <laughs> drugs for three days straight, going back to your office job for four days, <laughs> and then going back to a Coachella for that's the next insane. three? And they do the same that's insane. Like show both yeah. weekends. So yeah. People go to both weekends. So I'm like, what yeah. are they doing that mm. people are going to watch the exact same show it's the pro- following it's just, week? I think at this point, it's just the branding of it. Mm. Like Nike, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's but just, Coachella, Coachella, you know? Coachella, like... If you look at the old set list or like the old, old like, uh, like the ones from the '90s, fucking, it was an indie rock festival. It was it, like it, it was, was not what it was now. Yeah, no, fucking they definitely became Instagram. Popping. Listen, it was Instagram. <laughs> that did. Listen, when they started um, inviting like hip hop R and B artists, that's when they became mm-hmm. it, or that's when they became more known. I'm sure mm-hmm. they were always it, but this is a bit of a personal question for mm-hmm. me um what's your sin number you- <laughs> five, <laughs> five. <laughs> did, did you meet jid last year when he was on manifesto yeah and i saw him again at coachella what's, he's really cool what's he like he is so awkward i love awkward people because then we're just awkward together <laughs> um yeah he's like just like he was so grateful. Like we did the bare minimum. He's like, "Thank you so much. Like you're amazing." <laughs> and I'm just like, "Oh my gosh, thank you." Um, he's so friendly. Like he's just like walking around. He has to walk with like a bunch of like security. He's just there. Mm. Was he smoking the whole time? Oh, 100. percent He was so, high the whole time that's and sick. drunk. Like that's sick. yeah. That's that's like my, one of my favorite. Are you blushing? Right 
<laughs> no, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's definitely no, an artist. Actually right. you, can, <laughs> you can definitely, if you see him on the street, you can like approach him, mm -hmm. and he'd be like, "Hey." He, he always tweets like, "Yo, Inner City, I'm in you right now. What's up?" And he was like, "Yo, Montreal, I'm in you." And I was like, "I might just drive down and see yeah. what's up." He is a post very up inside. Hotel. I wanted to come last year to Manifesto, but I had COVID, so I couldn't oh, do it. Damn. I was like debating, like fuck it, but I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if we had to come back and be like, yeah, last year was great. Like during this interview, like some fucker gave everyone COVID at it. Like, <laughs> Jid was super cool though. Like, <laughs> that's sick. That's sick. I just wanted to know what he was actually like because he seems really dope through yeah, like, he is. his vlogs and all that stuff. But... He is. He is exactly what he portrays on Instagram. Have you, here's like, I, I love. Uh... Yeah, I saw a bug too. Yeah, it caught me off guard. It okay. caught, caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> just like a cat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just walks into the other room. <laughs> um, have you ever like, what's like the most like starstruck you've been when meeting a celebrity? It's a good question. I don't think I've ever. I've never met anyone cool. I, I like when there's people no have one, stories. Like there's that. only a certain amount of people that I like idolize. So Kanye's one. So okay. I was hoping that he would just do Coachella so I can like meet him, but he didn't. Um. And I love Beyonce. Like those are my two like top people. Everyone else is just They're two very powerful individuals. Yeah. And honestly, you learn that like when you do meet some of these people that like they're really just people and some of them are awful mm. people. So mm. That's a good and point. it ruins it. For Who's you. the worst celebrity? <laughs> Who's the worst celebrity you ever met? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> We'll, no, talk. we'll talk. We'll talk off camera. We'll talk. <laughs> Roosh will cut this. I promise. <laughs> the mic is still on. I'm like, I hate. <laughs> just, just say it. We'll bleep it out. We'll bleep it out. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I contemplated it. We went to a, a listening party for an artist, and he played as, like, this album he has, which is a bunch. It was a producer, and he had, like, a bunch of just, like, very, like, famous people on it, right? Like, just, like, very, like, prominent folks. I don't know what's come out yet, so I don't even think I can say it still. Yeah, we could say who's on it, though. We didn't say which producer it was right yeah it was like, like rick ross and like all, rich lil the wayne. kid lil wayne all these producers mm -hmm. on it so like we had one and i just like i couldn't hold it in like i was dancing around and like <laughs> using just such like being such a wordsmith and not saying the names and at the end i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> just had to bleep the whole part out. <laughs> so, so i guess you have like a pretty hands-on like role like even like obviously like the other 364 days a year when you're planning mm -hmm. it, but like when the event's going on and when you go travel to other events, like you're actually meeting these artists and like communicate with them. And, yeah. yeah. So we're lucky that some, our board chair and the co-founder of Manifesto is very well connected. So we get to be like be in spaces that I shouldn't be in. Mm. Um, or I, nah, I take that back. I should be in it. But you deserve no imposter syndrome in this Right? Room. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so I get to meet like, um, like I've met Ashanti, I've met um, Mustafa the Poet, I met Daniel Caesar the other day, That's like, sick. you know, so it's cool. That's sick. That is cool. Yeah. I wish I could say the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we now. just met Rich Kid. That we was met dope. Rich Kid yesterday. Just met Tanisha Richards. Let's you know, we're going to meet Four Corners later on today. Four this Corners is, a big is awesome. Weekend, you know? Yeah, she's like. <laughs> <laughs> have dinner with him every Tuesday. What are you talking about? No, you knew, really we're in the cool. same book club, you fucking bums. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's Four Corners like? He's so cool. He's so helpful. So he did our um, our festival last year as one of our like headlining DJs. He's so supportive. Mm. He's just like, don't worry about it. It was a mess. Backstage was a mess. The show was a mess. <laughs> and he was just like, don't dress it. Just yeah. let me go on and I'll do my thing. But... Sweet. Yeah. I love that. And this year he was just like, if you need help, let me know. Like I'm here to help. And, oh, that's awesome. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. One uh one thing I, I kind of found out about Cranium, and I, I don't know if I ever really took it in, but like the, the extra mile they go that will like reach out to guests about like what they like to have backstage when it comes to refreshments and like mm -hmm. uh, snacks. Oh, that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't I it's something I just never thought of. Like there's like candy backstage and one of the artists is like, yeah. Fucking, I'm like eating a pack of gummies. So like, you fucking <laughs> like that? Yeah, yeah. You're, fucking, you're welcome. Dude, for dude, that. I, I was just, I was filming City for Delia to do the halftime show at the Black Jacks game. And mm -hmm. we had like our own private room, mm -hmm. like there while we were waiting. And they're like, anything you want and stuff like that. And he was like, yeah, I want like a 
bottles of water and a towel and I started picture I was of like, rum and coke <laughs> and i started saying like yo that's kind of sick but then after i saw him do a set i was like okay those are kind of necessities like you actually do really need that but sometimes they ask for things they don't need yeah like, i'm yeah. like they're like two platters of fruit i'm like there's no way two platters you can maybe do like, one <laughs> <laughs> no but we get it like and then it just goes to waste, goes to waste. And it's the like, whole edible arrangement and just then the whole office is stuck trying to make enough smoothies listen for the <laughs> yeah we just freeze like, it like, yeah like, how many more pies can i eat <laughs> no it's really it's a real problem so um i'm gonna encourage artists not to ask more than what they need because mm. yeah the amount of food that goes to waste after they're like we need 50 chicken wings and i'm like there's three of you guys here like yeah. why it's Although, just who's why do you want to eat 50 <laughs> chicken wings and go on stage yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or who comes off stage and is like time for those 50 <laughs> chicken wings like, oh, I'll, I'll wait it all day for this i deserve those wings. and it's cold by the time you get there anyways because we're not like we don't keep it in a that's warmer I, that, that's, that's what better I mean. than cold I was, hot wings i was more so like pushing towards like like what's the best snacks and like because I feel like you're right. It's like a vegetable tray. Yeah. I mean, you cannot go wrong with a vegetable mm-hmm. tray. Right. I went to an event the other day. Cranium. Class act. Vegetable trays and finger sandwiches at the event yes. yesterday. Yes. Perfect. You know where the only other places you get those is funerals. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> like funerals, man. Like it was fucking. <laughs> I'd just be crashing the door of funerals for the ham salad sandwiches <laughs> sometimes, man. Um, I know I asked Ottawa, but... <laughs> Toronto, who are your top three artists to look out for? So, Notify. He's like kind of out there, but not. But Notify, I love Ashton Francis. He's like such a hardworking person. Um, and Leah. Leah's like an R&B. Like, I feel like she's going to be like our next like R&B princess of Toronto. Mm. Like, she's cool. very talented. And she can sing live, for real. Cool. So. I have all of them been on Manifesto. I know Notify has... Yeah, they all have. So oh, they're unbiased, okay. but okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why they were on the festival because they're awesome. So okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Do uh, I I feel like some people like or uh, show promoters or, or show booker like booking shows like you know like oh yeah like I gave them their first show you know what I mean is 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 there sort of that sort of um do you hold that like close to your heart ever like yeah like I I played a role in their career for sure I think that like manifesto is supposed to be like the launching pad of artists career mm. so like mustafa the poet like was with manifesto for such a long time so like seeing where he is right now is like we helped make that mm. happen you mm. know or we played a part in like yeah. making that happen um jesse reyes like performed daniel caesar so like seeing all these artists now like being mm, like who they are it's just, like it's kind of sick too like you guys are working right next to remix project who are like just pumping like J- Let's- jesse reyes is a graduate of and then you just send them down the hall to get that's the show literally started. it it's that's an ecosystem sick. that should be a sitcom yeah. or something man it's literally we film ecosystem. it we come film it yeah <laughs> We That's do like need a, someone to like film the manifesto life because it's chaos. But I feel like it would be like great content. I'll come with you. Well, yeah. like, I'll just come watch <laughs> shows with you if you want. Listen, yeah, we gotta come I'm down to Toronto for a week for just for other stuff we got yeah. going on. I'm down to just do like an office style. Yeah, like, that'd be cool. That'd Document. be sick. Yeah, that'd be sick. And we love the office, like the show, the office. Perfect. So, perfect. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm out of questions. I, this has been going so well. I, just, I know. You know, like, <laughs> quit while you're ahead. You know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> What's your favorite pizza topping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out too, man. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, what's the rest okay. of your day looking like for Cranium? Mm-hmm. Um, I have a panel. So that's fun. That was an was that an eye roll? Was no, that was an a, eye roll? It like, was not geez. an eye roll. It was a long blink. I have a <laughs> it was a long blink. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm awkward. So like when I do like panels and things like this, I'm just like mm-hmm. it takes a bit. It takes this, a bit. this was natural. a good like this was a good warm yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. So I hope it's like this where it's like an open conversation and right. not like tell us about mm-hmm. how manifesto started. I'm just like oh, I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, th- and there's like some of those questions too that are just like so classic like you know like it's, it's for us it's like how did you get your name like mm-hmm. for an artist you know what i mean or it's it's like what are the three principles you gotta have yeah, as an I artist i want to like talk like i'm writing a grant mm-hmm. i feel like sometimes that happens <laughs> so i'm just like mm-hmm. so yeah well thank you for stopping by we really appreciate thank it yeah thank you for very having much. me i hopefully, was like oh, i felt so special <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we can get you back here hopefully mm-hmm. it doesn't take you you know 
another forever to come back years. to Ottawa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to drop the year. I, was like, I don't, don't want to guess anything. Nineteen years, four days, and six minutes. <laughs> But yeah, hopefully, like Toronto, we're trying to do some more stuff there, mm -hmm. spread our seat a bit to other mm -hmm. cities. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely, you know, if you guys want like that backstage pass, yeah, you know, okay. for the show, yes, okay. manifesto, maybe a August. couch to sleep on. A, a couch. Listen, we have a couple <laughs> like, hotel okay, rooms. Hold on, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, chill. I've known you for an hour and a half, young man. You fucking back right up. <laughs> no, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Sweet. All right, that's some cool. You got it on camera. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Let me it. I'm <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Shout out to Manifesto, Tanisha Richards Thank in the building. You. In the house, man. The house. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Peace. And coming down to the wire. Apple center's handed. Reach right. He's coming up on the inside.